Welcome to the Uviatis Guy. The examination in Uviatis is very important. Today I'm going to share with you my approach and your segment. So my approach when examining patients with uveitis is to start from the front to the back, starting with IOP. Most cases of uveitis have normal or low intraocular pressure, but there are some cases of uveitis that present with high intraocular pressure caused by steroids, a virus, toxoplasmosis, posner schlossmann syndrome, Fuchs, peripheral anterior synechia, or pupillary block. In the external examination, I take a look at the eyelashes, the skin, the eyelids, I ask him to look up, down, left, and right, like in this patient with BKH. Clean Taiba, take a look if there is any injection, any hemorrhages, any ciliary flush. I ask him to look down, see if there is a bleb, see if there is an infection, like in a case like this, if there is an exposure of a tube. Sclera, if they have scleral thinning or scleral nodules, I palpate the sclera, I ask him to close the eye and I just touch over the eyelid and see if there is any tenderness in the areas of injection. Always check the cornea. Sometimes patients will have lesions that are not visible, but if you put some staining, you'll be able to see them. In the cornea, you can also see keratic precipitates, band keratopathy, usually seen with patients with chronic uveitis. The anterior chamber examination is very important because that way you can communicate and you can follow the patient and see if there is an improvement. Small square, one millimeter by one millimeter, high magnification, a lot of light, and count the cells. Flare doesn't mean active inflammation. Some patients who have chronic changes will have some chronic flare that will not go away, even if the inflammation is under control. Hypopion, of course, be infectious or non-infectious. The iris, I usually do also gonioscopy in these patients to see if there is any evidence of peripheral anterior synechia. I check for areas of posterior synechia, for areas of atrophy or transillumination defect. Nodules that are seen with sarcoidosis, for example. The lens is important. It will many times prevent you from seeing what's going on in the back of the eye. And we'll show you the chronicity as well. The lens, if the patient is pseudophagic, is also important because it may be the reason why the patient has inflammation. I sincerely appreciate you stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.